of Adam. In other words, we're seeing the quick and complete origins of the first man. So, here's the question. Who was Adam? Adam was the original human of retrojection, that extension of what they saw day in and day out when it came to the birth of humans extended back into the past. So we can ask again, who was Adam? Adam is an ancient biology of origins. The de novo creation of Adam, an ancient understanding of human origins. Well, what am I going to do with this idea that Adam is ultimately an ancient understanding of human origins? Is this going to be a problem for my faith? Not at all. I'm going to use the message incident principle again. And I'm going to separate the inerrant theology, the message of faith, from the incidental ancient science. When it comes to Adam, here are some of the inerrant messages. That God created humans. That humans are created in the image of God. That humans are sinful. We've all fallen short of God's glory. And that God judges humans for sin. That's the message of faith. Those are the spiritual truths that will change someone's life. And when it comes to Adam, I see the de novo creation of Adam as an incidental ancient science. It's an important element of the account in scripture, but it acts as a vessel to deliver these wonderful spiritual truths. Let me now come to a conclusion to this presentation that I have entitled, Was Adam a Real Person? And I'll use a simple little formula to get my point across. Adam equals three tiers. Or to put this diagrammatically, Adam is on the same level as the three-tier universe. Now, I don't think there's anyone out there who believes we live in a three-tier universe. But we saw within Genesis 1, the first chapter of the Bible, a three-tier universe being created, de novo, quickly and completely. And of course, we also recognize that this is an ancient astronomy and an ancient geology. Now, I don't for a second believe that anyone believes this is the case. So, if the astronomy's old, and if the geology's old, it only makes sense that the biology is also old. And we also saw that in Genesis 1, the creation of living organisms. And they were created de novo, quickly and completely. And how did ancient peoples come to that notion? Well, it was through retrojection. They saw a cow giving birth to a cow giving birth to a cow. There must have been an original cow. So too with humans. A human gives birth to a human gives birth to a human. There must be an original human. And of course, who's that human? Well, that's Adam. But what is that? That is an ancient understanding of biological origins. So in the same way that I don't believe there's a three-tier universe and that God created one, I don't believe that Adam was ever created de novo as stated in the scriptures. Let me state my conclusion more precisely. Adam is simply a retrojective conclusion. In other words, it is the conclusion that ancient peoples came to after thinking retrojectively of their experience of humans. A human gave birth to a human, gave birth to a human, and they extend this back into the past, and they come to an original human, created de novo. So this retrojective conclusion is the de novo creation of the human kind. So Adam is simply a retrojective conclusion of an ancient taxonomy. 
And this taxonomy looked at life and all they saw is creatures reproducing according to their kind. So an ancient taxonomy, which is based on an ancient phenomenological perspective of biology. So the ancients were viewing their experience from the naked eye. They didn't have the advantage of microscopes or genetics or the fossil record to understand human origins. They simply understood it from their phenomenological perspective. Let me summarize with regard to the astronomy, geology, and biology, including human biology, in the Bible. First, there is ancient science throughout the scriptures regarding the heavens, the earth, and living organisms. Second, when it comes to the creation of the heavens, the earth, and living organisms, it is creation that is de novo creation. It's creation that is quick and complete, and it is the best origin science of the day. Now, there's a significant implication with regards to this. If the science in scripture is an ancient science, then scientific concordism fails. That is, the notion that people go to their Bible to find out scientific facts will not work. Why? Because it's an ancient science. It does not align with modern science. Now, for some that might be a problem, but it really isn't. Because what we've seen is that the Holy Spirit used this ancient science and accommodated, in other words, went down to the level of ancient peoples and used their science in order to communicate as effectively as possible. And finally, this ancient science is a vessel for the message of faith that we find within the scriptures. In other words, it's like a cup that carries the living waters, and it is this living waters, the inerrant messages of faith from which we drink deeply for our spiritual nourishment. I open this presentation with a passage from my book, Evolutionary Creation, and I'll close with one. Adam is an incidental vessel that delivers inerrant foundations of the Christian faith to remind us now what you see in this statement is the message incident principle. The inerrant foundations of the faith, those are the deep truths. And what is Adam? As important as Adam is, he's incidental, or if you wish, secondary to these deep truths. So Adam reminds us the following. Number one, we are created in the image of God. Two, we are sinful. And three, God judges us for our sins. Now those are the deep, inerrant truths of the faith, and it's these truths that change the lives of men and women. Continuing, though Adam never existed, he is the prototype, that is, he is the classic example of the human spiritual condition. In order to understand our existence today, we must see ourselves in him. Adam is you and me. Thank you for your attention.